In this lesson, we will deal with radical expressions. There are three key symbols that are involved here. There's the radical, which is the symbol that we use in order to solve these type of expressions. There's the radicand, which is the number that we're trying to simplify, and then the index. This number shows us the amount of times a factor is multiplied by itself in order to become b, which is the radicand. Typically, if you see the radical all by itself, it's assumed that there will be a 2 in here. They call this the square root. This expression here is saying that we're trying to find the square root of 4. First, I will break down how to find a perfect square. Those numbers are very easy when it comes to a radical expression. A perfect square is a number that can be created by multiplying one factor by itself. This could be as easy as 1, because 1 times 1 equals 1. 4 is another number, and I can go on. One way to find out if a number is a perfect square is look at its factors. Let's take number 16. Let's list its factors. It has 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Now keep in mind, 1 times 16 will equal 16, as will 2 and 8. 4 multiplied by itself will equal 16. This is indicating that 16 is a perfect square. 4 itself, as we already know, is a perfect square. Now in this lesson, we'll only be dealing with radical expressions that are square roots. This is just a number multiplied by itself once. There are many other radical expressions, such as ones where numbers need to be multiplied by themselves twice, three times, even ten times. We'll start with a factor that we're already familiar with, four. Now here we can see we have the square root of four. A very easy method in how to find out the answer of this is list factors. In four's case, we can think of two. Now after you list your factors, find pairs of them. Once you can find a pair, take that single factor out and you have something on the outside of the radical. In this case, there are no more factors. So we have the answer being two, because two multiplied by two equals four. Let's try doing 32. Now what we have to keep in mind is that some numbers are going to stay inside the radical because there's no way of taking them out. So in case of 32, we will break it down to 4 and 8. Now we can already take out 4 because we know we're going to get 2 from it. But instead, let's try and take the factors of 8 as well. When we break down 8, we'll get 4 and 2. We notice that we do have a pair of fours here. Two is going to stay inside the radical because we do not have another two anywhere in this expression. Which means that the answer here would be four multiplied by the square root of two. Let's try two times the square root of 100. We'll break down 100 and we'll find 10 times 10. That's easy enough. But we're going to have to take a 10 out of here and multiply it by 2. Which easily we know equals 20. We'll next try another one of these. Let's say I have the square root of x squared. Think about it. When you have x squared, it's x times x. So we know to take one x out of here. And that would be our answer. We're going to do one final example. This is going to involve different coefficients as well as variables. This problem will be x times the square root of 28x to the fourth. So let's break down our factors here. We know that factors of 28 
can be 2 times 14 and factors of x to the fourth would be x times x times x times x. We already know that we have two pairs, so we know that we'll be bringing x squared outside of here. But let's finish breaking down the numbers. 14, we can get 2 times 7. We notice that we have a pair of 2's. Here, 7 is alone, so it will stay inside the radical. So we know that our expression is now going to have x from the coefficient times 2 times x times x. Then, it will also be multiplied by the square root of 7. So we will have 2 x cubed, due to the fact that there are three x's, square root of 7. Radical expressions are easy as long as you can figure out the factors and be able to match up numbers.